a brand new hockey season, a brand new home, and it's out with the old and in with the new for the Winnipeg Blues this 2019-2020 season. Here we are outside the Rink Training Center in beautiful Oak Bluff, Manitoba. It's not that far from McGilvery Boulevard and Kenniston, but nonetheless, just a quick slap shot away, you'll now find the new home of the Winnipeg Blues. I'm Theo with Amateur Sports TV on the Ice Show, brought to you by Pemben, a source for sports, the Blues edition, where we'll have a chance to catch up with head coach Burnett and several of the players in today's show. As for the Winnipeg Blues, Quite a history nonetheless. The MGHL starting their season in 1919 and the Blues, formerly known as the Winnipeg Monarchs back in the day, having their first inaugural season in 1930. Over the course of a long period in Winnipeg, they were also known as the Fort Gary Blues, the Winnipeg South Blues up until 2010, and now known as the Winnipeg Blues here in Winnipeg at the start of their 2010-2011 season. Last year for the Blues in their 60 games, had a winning record of 31-22-7 and with a total of 69 points. It gave them a spot number six in the MJHL last year. They took on the Steinbach Pistons in the first round and unfortunately for the Blues, it was a quick exit, losing that series in six, in six games. Steinbach did have a very good team and did move on to the next round but unsuccessful for them. This year's Blues team, a lot different in many ways. First off, a brand new ownership program with 50 Below, as they will now become part of the trifecta under the umbrella of 50 Below Sports, including the new WHL team with the Winnipeg Ice, the Winnipeg Blues, and the RHA. Here at the Winnipeg Blues program, three players have been selected from a roster that will see the remaining being fresh, brand new players under the Blues organization. Coach Gord Burnett, also a new head coach, having spent several years with the Kootenai Ice of the WHL, he now allows his prospects and his coaching accolades to be lent to the Winnipeg Blues for this year and many more, I'm sure, after having several years as a coaching position with the WHL Ice. The Winnipeg Blues will begin this season starting off with the Portage Terriers. Their first home game is this Sunday at 5.30 at the Rink Training Center. And it should be a wonderful good tilt. As for returning players, Michael Sartor as well as Braden Foreman are the two players to look forward to seeing from last year to this year. They are going to be bringing the veteranship for this young team that is going to be fast, quick, and although they might not have as much experience as before, they will come with the tenacity that is expected from the skill and the mindset led by Coach Gord Burnett. Gord Burnett will sit down and have a chance to talk to him during today's episode of On the Ice to help understand what's more about Coach Burnett, what his playing level was like, and more importantly, what he expects from his players this year from the Winnipeg Blues. We'll also have a chance to talk to Brady Foreman and Michael Sartor and a good friend of the show, Nick Finson, who is now trading his skates in from a rural program at a hockey academy, bringing his skills to the Winnipeg Blues. Braden Foreman is leading the preseason scoring, having played four games, scoring four goals and one helper. The Winnipeg Blues have a record in the preseason that is now finished of one win, four losses, two points. But as always, the preseason is a time change and a time to evaluate how to make the roster, who is going to make up that roster for this upcoming weekend. We're going to take a quick break, but we're going to let you know some more of this beautiful building behind us, the Rank Training Center, and we'll give you a tour after we do some of these interviews with the players and the coach of the Winnipeg Blues. This is On the Ice, brought to you by Pemina Source for Sports. Come and join us inside. Hi, I'm Nettie Weiss from Metal Master. You had an accident? Sometimes they're embarrassing, but they're always inconvenient. We have an incredible staff to take care of. We have platinum certified techs in four different categories. We are certified as a gold class accredited shop. If you've made a claim already, perfect. Call us with your claim number. If you need a claim open, give us a call. We'll walk you through. Sometimes you can get a little nervous dealing with NPI. We'll help you. Metal Master Auto Body, straight 
inside the rink training center as we're watching some of the players from the RHA doing their laps. We'll get to see the media center in the corner. And as we come across this beautiful facility and all the wonderful seats available for home games for the Winnipeg Blues, quite an amazing facility here with all of the amenities, the skate sharpening, the ice shop downstairs, as well as the viewing lines of this facility. Quite substantial, beautiful lighting, and a great chance to catch your home games here with the Winnipeg Blues at the Rink Training Center. We'll be back with head coach Gord Burnett, first year coach with the Winnipeg Blues, and we'll talk about his relationship with his young team as his, well as his expectations for this upcoming 2019-2020 season. Stay with us. The Four Points by Sheraton, Winnipeg South. Conveniently located on South Pembina Highway near the Trans-Canada Bypass and one hour from the U.S. border crossing. Offering a saltwater pool, hot tub, 24-hour fitness center, restaurant, and lounge. Theo here with head coach Gord Burnett, first year coach with the Winnipeg Blues. Gord, welcome to Winnipeg. How has the first couple of months been with the team since you've been announced the head coach of the Blues? Yeah, it's it's been busy for sure. Um, a lot going on, getting to know the players, getting things organized. Uh, new facility for the Blues, new players. We only have uh, three returning guys, so it's been uh, it's been a whirlwind for sure. Quite the turnaround, as mentioned. Three returning veteran players, a new facility. What does this facility bring to you that you most enjoy about having the Blues here at the Ring Training Center? For sure, it. Uh, I think we offer. Um, we offer development opportunities that aren't seen within the league, and so we're excited about what we offer, especially young players and their opportunity to develop. And we uh, we have a lot of young players. We should be the youngest uh, team in the league, and um, for this facility, it, it offers everything they need to uh, become players. Now you have several years of coaching experience, as well as playing, of course. Uh, the last four, I believe, in Kootenay with the ice there. Coming now to Winnipeg with the same program. Because it's such a young team, what do you look to bring for these players so that they can rely on as being their number one trait? Well, yeah, for sure. First of all, yeah, I've been, uh, I was in Cooney with the ice and then uh, obviously the same owners are here. And um, so familiar, some familiar faces, got to work with some good, good people over there. And, uh, you know, in the Western Hockey League, there's a lot of young players and, and our team's a, a lot of young players as well. So there's some familiarity there. Um, it's just a different level, but uh, I'm familiar with young players and what they need. And so, you know, when we go to teach them, we just rewind a little bit and we take a couple steps back and we're still teaching the same stuff. We just uh, started um, maybe a little bit more basic, but we still get to the same place. So preseason's finished. We had a couple of practices before the home opener this weekend with Portage. With the preseason and the games you've seen, what has been uh, the most important part of the game you like and what is the most important thing we got to improve on from those first couple of games? Yeah, so we've implemented a lot of structure, but but uh, only about half of what we what we still need to get in. So there's a long way, long way to go, but we have to get reps. And so, you know, we're trying to see what guys are picking up what and what we have to work more on and when can we add more to what we're doing. So, uh, you know, we have one more practice before we see Portage tomorrow. So we're going to continue to work on things and, um, you know, we'll, we'll be ready. Everyone's in the same boat as us. We've, they've all had the same time. And so uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Preparation, preseason, always go hand in hand. When it comes to the coaching perspective, how are you mentally prepared for tomorrow's action with Portage? Uh, that's a that's a good question. So we we watched our last preseason game, and but to the truth, truthfully, we're more focused on ourselves right now. We want to see where guys are at with the system and and what what we need to continue to work on and where we can move on. So we're really focused on ourselves at this point in the season, and uh, you know, obviously, we're going to go. Uh, play an opponent but for at the same time it, whatever they do doesn't really matter right now we're focused on what we're going to do so what you're going to do is most important like you said you can only control what you do you can't control what they do yeah. but having that said what have you haven't had to implement with these young boys and these young men when it comes to being on the road and their uh their schedule per se how are they being well prepared or they still need those reminders they're all young players and they're uh, still very early in their career some of them have never played junior hockey before so so we've started at ground zero. So, you know, I always say they don't know what they don't know, but once we've taught it and we've reiterated it and we've done reps, now they know. So now we can start to hold them accountable and, and create that accountability and that standard that we're looking for. So let's go back in the way back machine with Peabody one second. You playing in the, uh, your junior years. What do you remember being that youngster that you can tell these players the same is going to happen or what to expect stepping on the ice tomorrow? 
Well, you know, take it all in. It'll be a good experience for the for guys playing their first junior hockey game. Um, what I remember, you know, I, that's a while ago now, but um, it, it, it there was a lot going on. You know, you, you never played in, that, in front of that many people, and the coaches are asking you to do a lot of different things and uh, just trying to sort it all out. What do I need to do? What's my job in what situation? So try and focus on my game and um, just try and get through the 60 minutes, really. One moment of this weekend, what would you like to see the fans see on the ice from your players? Just compete. I want our guys to compete. You know, the system's a system, but if, if they forget that, I want them to compete. We've worked, we've talked a lot about our principles and our habits, so as long as we stick to that and we compete hard and we work hard, I'll be fine no matter what the system looks like uh, this early in the season. So I ask all the players one or two personal questions, so I'm going to ask you this, Gord. Pre-game meal, has it changed from being a player to a coach, or is it something you more likely enjoy now that you're a coach? Uh, you know, it's changed a lot because now it's it's lucky if I get that meal, you know, is the truth of it. I, I try and sneak in 20 minutes of uh, a nap, if you want to call it that, laying down anyway, but uh, I actually really, it's rarely that I get to eat unless we're on the road. Last question for you, Gord. Is there a famous phrase you use behind the bench over the years? I mean, as myself as a coach, there's something I always say that my players know that I either mean business or I'm lazy, chilling out. Is there something you say behind the bench or the fans should expect to hear from you, knowing to get the boys rallied up or get them to make, find that next level? You know what? I'm sure there is, and the players might be able to tell you already, even just with our exhibition uh, games, but uh, I don't even know what that is yet. But um, we'll figure that out pretty soon. Head coach Gord Burnett with the Winnipeg Blues organization. They take on Portage Terriers this weekend, the home game Sunday. What time? 7, 5.30 here at the Rink Training Center. Come and watch some great junior hockey from these young boys, and we'll see you again very soon in the season, Gord. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Theo with the On the Ice. We'll be right back with those players after this. Are you looking for a career in the salon industry? Check out Aveda Institute Winnipeg in the exchange. What sets us apart is our student mentorship program, 95% placement rate after graduation, real-world salon experience, and network of 7,000 salons and spas. You will learn creative cut and coloring, latest trends and techniques, social media marketing, fashion shows, photo shoots, and more. Now accepting applications for 2018, so check us out and book your tour today. Aveda Institute Winnipeg, hair school the way it should be. On the Ice is back after talking with Coach Gord Burnett and what his expectations are for this young squad and the Winnipeg Blues. We'll have a chance to talk to three of those players and two of those three being veterans coming back from last year's season in the Winnipeg Blues. We'll talk to Michael Sartor, Brady Foreman, and Nick Finson, all looking forward to this weekend's tilt with the Portage Terriers. Stay with us. On the ice here, joining me, Brady Foreman, number 12 with the Winnipeg Blues. One of the three veterans from the team from last year, correct, Brady? How was this season, the beginning of the season for you, and the hard games you had to play so far? Oh, well, definitely. We have a lot younger team than we did last year, so it's been a little bit of an, an adjustment for a lot of the guys, but it's nice to kind of have a leadership role and teach them what we have, what we learned from last year. So you definitely learned something from last year, being one of the younger guys. Now the veteran role, what do you bring or tell these youngsters that are joining the team the most important part of their game? You know, it's, it's a faster league. It's a bigger league. You're playing against guys that are three or four years older than you, so you just have to kind of adapt to the speed of the play and don't be afraid to get into the corners with the bigger guys. So it's a bigger guys league. You're five foot seven, but how are you able to move around? Is it your speed? Is it your, you know, your agility kind of thing? You're more of an NHL 20... 10 got a guy or uh i don't know i try to i incorporate a lot of the little spin moves and quick quick little adjustments going side to side in the corners just always keeping my head up making sure i'm not getting my head taken off so more of a johnny hockey less than a you know jeff bookaboom kind of guy yeah i don't really know who that second guy is he's from the 90s he's a little old reference we'll get back to him later he's he's the one that hurt the younger guys anyway who do you emulate your game is it johnny hockey johnny Gujo, or is it someone else you have more in particular I don't really uh, mo like model it after one specific person, but I like to think I play a lot like guys like Goudreau and Ehlers and just smaller, faster guys. So fast and agile is key. Keeping you fast and agile, Brady, what do you eat before a game that's so important for your speed? Uh, most of the time it's just like pasta and chicken. Get some protein in you, get some energy for the game. Okay, so why choose number 12? Is that like a number you've grown up with or is this here you're gonna be number 12? Uh, it's been in my family for a long time. My dad wore it when he played hockey, so just pass it down to me. 
Okay, so we're coming down two on one. Are you a shot first guy or a pass guy first? Definitely a pass first guy. I don't shoot the puck a lot. See, that's funny because you've got four goals and only one assist in the preseason games, yet you're a pass first guy. What do you look to bring to the game that hasn't been seen just yet from your other fellow players? Uh, uh, like last year, again, I was a lot more of a pass first guy and I didn't score a whole lot of goals, so I'm kind of trying to be more dynamic this year and incorporate a little bit of both. A little bit of both into my game this year. So. Okay, so on the road, being one of the veterans, have you decided on any role model slash team building exercises that need to happen? Uh, we, we play a lot of soccer before the games and keep up. So that's a big team building game that we play. So soccer before the game, get the feet going. Brady, I want to thank you very much. Anybody want to say hi to you before we say goodbye? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. <laughs> He's a little shy in front of the camera, but not on the ice. Brady Foreman, the leader Foreman with the uh, four goals so far in the preseason. He'll be on the ice this weekend versus Portage. This has been On the Ice. We'll be right back with Michael Sardo. On the ice, joining me now is Michael Sartor, another veteran on the team. Michael, welcome to the show. What does it now mean to you moving into the Rink Hockey Training Center here and the beautiful facility that you have use of? Um, it's obviously a great environment, a lot of great people around. Uh, the RHA program, the ice, great facility for them and great for us too. And uh, yeah, I mean, it'll be good to get used to things and get into it. Awesome. Tell us about the last couple of years you've been playing. I mean, last year with the Blues, before that, and how your game began to develop here now that you're playing into the MGHL. Um, yeah, it was a lot quicker last year than the previous year with the Wild. Uh, I had to, it took me a while to adjust to it, which I'm sure it'll take a few of the guys on my team to adjust because we have a lot of rookies. Um, yeah, no, it's just a process you got to get used to. So as a younger guy now moving into that veteran role, what do you try to tell the youngsters when they're coming onto the ice now for the first regular season games? Uh, you just can't be scared. You got to keep your head up and you still got to go in the corners, dig for the pucks, get in the battles. You just, it'll help you along the way and uh, it's just a good way to get used to it. All right, Michael. So as a forward, what part of your game is the strongest and what part of the game do you need to work on still to be that full embodied player now? Uh, I'd say my stick handling and my passing is probably my best part of my game. Um, I just always look for the pass if I don't have a shot, you know. And then I'd like to say that my skating or my foot, like my acceleration, I'd like to work on it. Be one of the faster guys in the league. Absolutely. Acceleration away from those bigger guys. I mean, you start playing guys that are two or three years older than you. They definitely know how to move and they mature a lot better. What have you noticed in your own maturity from last year to this year now in the short preseason? Um, sometimes I just, like, games against Portage and the teams where there's huge guys, I would, I was kind of scared. I, I'm not going to lie, I didn't like to go in the corners, but now that I'm getting used to it, you know, I just keep my head up and you just got to battle hard. Okay, so a two-on-one shot first, pass first kind of player? Uh, it depends. I usually like to go for the pass first, but if you have to shoot, you know. I was more of a shoot guy. Yeah. I like shooting. Yeah. I like goal scores. I like to like open up the D and bring him to me and then pass it to the guy so he's got like a good lane. So even a breakaway maybe. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you talk about a difference in the change of the way the game is played and the, your chemistry with your line mates. What's the most important thing you got to work with the three guys up front? Um, you got to talk lots, talk before games, talk intermissions just know what we're doing out there together um yeah i mean i don't know so on the bench you're not the quiet type you guys are talking about the play before what to improve if you see something let's do a versus b when it comes to seeing a set of defense pairings do you share notes on how to get around those guys yeah we like to like bring it to one defenseman rather than the two on two if it's a two on two per se we bring it to one guy and try and expose that guy. And as soon as we get around that guy, then we look for the shot or the pass. It's amazing how the game has changed to now a whole bunch of two-on-ones on the ice versus just a three-on-two or yeah. moving forward. Tell, talk to me about the transition game that the Blues bring. I mean, you're looking to, 
you know, intercept as many passes, but then quickly strike when they make mistakes? Is that kind of what we're looking forward yeah. to seeing? Yeah. Um, as soon as you get a turnover, you want to, like, as soon as you can, right to the net, look for the pass, shoot either off the pad, get a rebound, something like that. You just get as many pucks to the net as we can because that's how we're going to win games. Absolutely. As many pucks to the net as you can. You're a passer and you like to accelerate so you don't get caught by the bigger and older guys. How do you stay on top of your game? What's the most important part of your game off the ice that you feel it's important for you? Um, I like to play Sue, obviously, with the team, but also I like to go in my own little corner and stretch and just think about what I'm going to do out there, how I'm going to play at my best. So getting mentally focused and yeah. physically ready for a game, uh, Nutrition-wise, what are you looking for before a game? What do you? What are your? What's your go-to go meal? Ah, uh, usually pasta and chicken. Sometimes veal. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> a little veal. A little veal. I like veal. <laughs> the guy likes veal. Okay. Interesting. Um, what's in the discman? What's in the MP3 player right now that gets you pumped up for a game? Rap. Lots of rap. Like the good rap from back in the day or the new stuff? A little bit of both. I like country too, though. So. It doesn't really matter. I kind of like all music. Okay, a little twang, a little thing, a little bit of Okay, awesome. Now, if you had somebody that you had to emulate your game as if it was like, who would you follow in the NHL? Personally, my favorite player is Ovechkin, but I know he's a sh shoe first guy, and that's not really me. Uh, I don't know. Not Kane. He's too good. Too good. Kane's too good? Yeah, too good. Of hands, I don't have those hands. Well, you can always dream, right? Yeah, you could dream, yeah. So we're going to dream about hands like Kane, the heart of Ovi, even though he's a shoot first kind of guy. Yeah. Michael, last thing I'm going to. With, with the contract, right? Yeah, yeah with the contract. Okay, okay. Go. I want to ask you one last question, Michael, before I let you go. Tell me what it's like playing in the MGHL now, your second year, and the importance of balancing your life on and off the ice. Obviously, school very important. Like, not always. Obviously, hockey's not always gonna work out, so you want to have a backup plan always. But it's good to, I don't know, keep your hopes high, look for a scholarship or anything you can, and yeah, I don't know. I think it's important. Stay in it. Staying in it and getting that student athlete together. I love it. Love to hear that, Michael. Thank you for joining us here on the ice. We look forward to seeing you playing this weekend. Portage should be a fun and fast set of weekend games, right? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be good. But obviously, they're looking to be one of the top teams in the league, so it'll be good. Anybody want to anybody want to say hi before we leave? Mom and dad, hi. Girlfriend. <laughs> Mom, dad, and the girlfriend, Michael Sartor. Thank you very much. We'll be right back here on the ice. On the ice here, joining me, a veteran of uh, amateur sports TV, because we saw him a lot last year in Pilot Mountain, Manitoba, Nick Finson makes the jump to the Winnipeg Blues organization. Nick, how was the offseason, and how excited are you to now play with the Blues? Uh, the offseason was good. I trained lots, and I'm super excited to be with the Blues. Uh, it should be awesome. It's already awesome, and we haven't even had our first game yet. I'm just playing at this level. It's awesome. like, sweet. <laughs> so it's super pumped, super good to play at this level. What's the first thing you notice in the preseason that's different than playing in Pilot Mountain than it was to playing with the Blues? It's a lot faster, and all the guys are way bigger that you're playing against, and it's a lot more physical, faster moving. Everything's different, but it's fun, like, good to get used to. <laughs> so you were pretty good eluding bigger guys last year. you got to be that much faster this year because these boys are not just the same age as you, but they're a lot bigger, and they know how to move their body faster too, right? Yeah, they're a lot bigger, and I don't even know. It's just I try to hit people, and I just bounce off, so i got to get a new technique, I guess. So a new body technique is going to be important. So we also got to add a little bit of size to the frame. I guess the number one food I'm going to ask, pasta and chicken. What else do you enjoy after those two foods? Um, for a pregame, maybe just some peanut butter toast and milk. I don't know. Load up on that. Right, I'll load up on some PB and toast. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Now, 21. Why 21 this year? Was that the number last year too? Yeah. I don't know. I've always just been 21 since I was like seven years old, just keep Nick going. I don't know. I like the number. <laughs> it's just tradition. <laughs> keep Nick going, number 21. I love it. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the preseason, you talked about the speed, you talked about the size. What else surprised you about the preseason games? But what part of your game were you obviously prepared for? Um, I was prepared for it to be faster. I went to the Winnipeg Ice Camp, so I knew that it was going to be quick hockey like that. So 
I don't know, that's about all the speed and the physicalness. And then, yeah. So tell me about the ice camp, because what was that like playing against, you know, or playing with a lot of the players before even the team was being put together? Uh, it was a pretty cool experience. You got to see, like, all the skill, and I liked how they split up all the players evenly. So you got to know some of the WHL players and just get to hang out and be chill with them. So it's pretty cool. Remember any of those initial conversations you had with some of those guys and some tidbits they might have given you for now playing into the junior programs? Uh, they didn't really give me any like tips for a junior, but before every game they would huddle us around the net and just tell us to keep our heads up, move fast, be smart, and we'll be fine. Be fast, be smart, you should be fine. Your coaching staff, what are they, what are they striving to put on you as players in terms of structure? What type of game are they looking from you coming into this weekend against Portage? I feel like they're really looking for us just to break it down into five small one-on-one -on -one battles. And if we win those battles, then we'll be successful, and that's all we can own for. Okay, so what part of you, you know, you're a four-checking kind of guy from last year. You're, like, getting dirty in the corners. Back-checking has definitely improved a lot, I'm sure. Are you more of a shoot-first, pass-first kind of player? Um, since I'm defense, I, I really like to pass it first. I like to be a playmaker and just, I don't know, set up my friends and just make them look good. So, no, oh, no, it's good. So when you talk about moving the puck first, obviously the puck moves faster than the player. When you now for for all these youngsters, I mean, I play defense as well. Uh, I wasn't known for my uh, speed up front. Having that said, when you grab that puck first, when you pick your head up, what's the first thing you're doing with the puck on your stick? I'm looking if I have open ice because the more ice I have, I can move it up, get it over a zone, get maybe get over the red, get it deep, and just get a good forecheck going. So getting that puck deep, getting the forecheck, I'm going to back, backtrack a little bit now. When you have to play that dump and chase and you're getting that puck dumped in on you, what's the first thing you're doing if you got to grab that puck? First thing I'm doing is checking over my shoulder, seeing how big the guy is coming at me, and then obviously seeing which like directions the weak side is and trying to get the puck over to my D partner or just making a clean play out of the zone. So you've had lots of D partners over the preseason here. How important is that communication, knowing that you're one of the new guys on this team, obviously learning your, play, your, new, your new teammates, and then what communication are you guys using in terms of reverses or letting you know you got a man on kind of thing? How well is that working for you? Uh, well, our coaches set us up with lots of good plays, so we, we have names for them and we call them out. And on the bench, like when we switch up our players, we... Uh, like everyone has good communication we all have like a good idea of how we play and like where we'll be so like the support system's pretty good so far so the players are working on names for plays we won't get into those those are secret but more importantly your coaches have already worked on that structure for you what is the one thing they're emphasizing the most as a team to move forward and progress i don't know <laughs> it's pretty hard to say um i'm not too sure <laughs> Do you think you're more of a fast team this year or more of a possession team? I feel like we're going to be a quick team, quick young team, and just get, like, gritty when we have to. And just, like, I think our hard work will pay off, like, overall. A gritty team, a fast team. Both qualities Mr. Nick Finson brings to the table. His team will be playing this weekend against Portage. Home game is Sunday at 5.30. Nick, what would you expect from the fans coming down on Sunday to see from your team on the ice? Coming to see our team? Uh, I don't know. I think it should be fun. I think they'll be loud. Portage is always a good place to go and play. And I don't know. It's always just fun to seeing the two teams collide. <laughs> so the regular season kicks off this weekend for the Winnipeg Blues against the Portage Terriers. And we'll be right back here on the ice. The Four Points by Sheraton, Winnipeg South. Conveniently located on South Pembina Highway near the Trans-Canada Bypass and one hour from the U.S. border crossing. Offering a saltwater pool, hot tub, 24-hour fitness center, restaurant, and lounge. Here we are in the ice shop of 50 Below in the Rink Training Center. You'll see the ice, you'll see the RHA, and the gear from our own Winnipeg Blues. They start this season on the road Friday night in Portage as they take on the ter Terriers as well. Don't forget their home opener is this Sunday. 5.30 is the start time. We had a chance to catch up with Coach Burnett and his expectations for his young squad of the 2019-2020 season as well. Goal scoring leader Braden Foreman, Michael Sartor, and Nick Finson of the Winnipeg Blues were able to share some of their expectations and highlights of their 
young career as hockey players here. This is Theo with On the Ice and Amateur Sports TV. We'll be doing this again very soon. Take care.